Hey guys, welcome back to Rest News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there is a ton of news stories to get into today. So let's start off talking about Triple H. Now, of course, Triple H has been absent from the public eye after suffering his cardiac events earlier this year. There was a video last week floating around of Triple H, along with the likes of Vincent Mann, Nick Khan, Stephanie McMahon, the board of directors in WWE, etc., surveying, viewing WWE's new offices that they are going to be building, or they're currently in the process of building or moving into, having work done, etc. It was the first time that we had seen Triple H since this cardiac event. It wasn't exactly a public appearance, but it was the first time we have seen the game since the news broke about his cardiac event earlier this year. Now, when it comes to Triple H, not a lot has been known about this cardiac event, but we might have some more details, especially when it comes to the severity of the problem, the severity of the incident, and it appears that it was very, very serious indeed, because WWE Executive Vice President of Global Talent Strategy and Development, Paul Triple H Levesque, had a cardiac event back in uh, September, and that issue was reportedly very serious. Now, as has been noted here on the channel and was noted worldwide when the news broke, WWE announced back on uh, September 8 that Triple H underwent successful heart surgery the week before at Yale New Haven Hospital in New Haven, Connecticut. Now, the, it was stated that the operation was needed after Triple H suffered a cardiac event caused by a genetic heart issue. WWE's statement noted how Triple H was expected to make a full recovery. But in an update on this news... Dave Meltzer noted on the latest Sunday night's main event podcast that Triple H's cardiac event was described as, quote, very, very, very serious by a source. Now, Triple H reportedly has not resumed his daily duties with the company, and it remains to be seen uh, when he will be back with the company full time doing what he does on a day to day basis. The WWE Hall of Famer is expected to be back with the company in some form at some point, but it's not yet been confirmed he will return in the exact same high stress job that he had once before. Now, WWE Chief Brand Officer Stephanie McMahon spoke with TalkSport last week, and when she was asked how her husband is doing, she responded, quote, Paul Triple H is doing great. Thank you very much for asking. As I mentioned, there was a tour uh, of the new WWE HQ offices that are being built up in Stamford, Connecticut. A video saw Triple H um, there surveying the scene, if you will, along with the likes of, as I mentioned, Vincent Mann, Nick Khan, and others. Now, As I mentioned, it was reported back on September 17, a few weeks after the surgery, that everything was quiet within WWE on Triple H's condition, but he was in good enough shape that he was taking phone calls, but the WWE had told talents that they could call the game and wish him well, but they were not to talk about any WWE-related business with him. Triple H then issued a statement on September 21st, where he said he's recovering and doing well and deeply grateful for the love of his life. He also said that he was especially grateful for the NXT crew and talent, including Hall of Famer Shawn Michaels, for stepping up. Michaels is now billed as, quote, Vice President of Talent Development after previously working as an NXT coach slash producer. Now, Triple H has missed all of the NXT 2.0 tapings, including that big reboot episode in mid-September, but there's no word yet on if he's had any remote involvement. So there you go. It's, it's, It's a case of... It being very, very serious, very, very serious. And um, I think what's interesting in those reports that have been mentioned there that, you know, it's interesting to know if he's ever going to go back to the high stress job that he once was in. He's obviously going to be a senior figure in the company. He's always going to be an important guy within the company. That's why he was at that tour of the new headquarters in Stanford, Connecticut uh, a couple of weeks ago, whenever that video was. The most important thing, like I said before, is that Triple H uh, gets healthy and he recovers uh, and he lives a long and happy life. That That's it. That, that's it. You know, pro wrestling, and we can talk about match quality, creative, NXT, bad matches, bad promos, whether you like WWE or you don't like WWE, it pales in comparison to life. It pales in comparison to life. This guy has a, a, a wife. He has a family. He has... He's a father, he's a son, he's a husband, and that's the most important thing. So um, I know people have asked, oh, is Triple H ever going to wrestle again? Even at this stage, I know we're a couple months removed from the from the surgery and the announcement, all that kind of stuff. Even at this stage, it's not important. It's not important if Triple H ever wrestles again. What's important is that he's alive, and if these reports are accurate, that it was very, very, very serious, that's the most important thing, is that he's healthy and he's happy. So uh, fingers crossed, Triple H 
continues to make a full recovery. And look, hopefully he can go back to doing what he was doing before with NXT, you know, because he appeared to be happy doing that. Uh, but ultimately, like I said, health and, and happiness, it pales in comparison to pro wrestling or anything like that. Uh, let's move on and talk about Raw last night. Edge returned last night from Monday Night Raw at the UBS Arena in Long Island. Now, Edge, in his promo, referenced a much-talked-about AEW Dynamite segment during the episode of Raw last night. Now, Raw, of course, emanated from Long Island, and it saw Edge make his return to WWE television. Of course, this was his first appearance since being drafted to Raw in the draft in October, his first appearance since defeating Seth Rollins in a Hell in a Cell match at Crown Jewel at the end of October also. Now, Edge came to the ring, mentioned how he wants to face this new pool of talent on Monday Night Raw that he's never faced before. He mentioned AJ Styles, Kevin Owens, Finn Balor, Damian Priest, Big E, but he was quickly interrupted by the returning Miz, and not only was the Miz returning, but also was the Miz's wife, Maurice. This was the Miz's first appearance since leaving for ABC's Dancing with the Stars back in September during the beginning of a feud against John Morrison. Unfortunately, though, John Morrison's no longer with the company. He was released back in November 18. This was Maurice's first appearance since since mid-April. Now, the back-and-forth promo between the A-lister and the Rated R Superstar included a reference to last week's Thanksgiving Eve edition of AEW Dynamite. Now, of course, during that segment last week between CM Punk and MJF on Dynamite, CM Punk made the reference to The Miz, saying that MJF was a, quote, less famous version of The Miz. And it looks like it wasn't necessarily The Miz making reference to this. It was Edge making reference to this. But it was certainly very interesting. This is what Edge said, quote, you have other people, uh, you have people rather on other shows saying your name just to get a cheap reaction. You live rent free in a lot of heads. Now, the line was delivered as Edge was giving praise and props to The Miz, but the general tone of the promo was a back and forth uh, between them and it was tension between Edge and The Miz. Now, this week's Miz and Edge segment on Raw ended with the two former WWE champions teasing a fight before The Miz declined and made his exit as fans booed. It is possible they will face off at the WWE Day 1 pay-per-view on Saturday, January 1st, but that has not been confirmed. This has also not been confirmed, but there is some speculation on social media that we could see a situation uh, of rather Edge versus The Miz. We could see The Miz and Maurice versus Edge and Beth Phoenix. Now, of course, it's kind of similar-ish, isn't it, to the Miz and Maurice versus John Cena and Nikki Bella mixed tag team match that we saw at WrestleMania 33. We could see something like this. I know that Beth Phoenix is retired, but she's wrestled multiple times since then. Several Royal Rumbles, even WrestleMania 35 when she teamed up with Natalia. So uh, we could certainly see that, that happen. And, and I think, to be honest with you, ever since Edge has come back, they've probably wanted to do... They've probably wanted to do... Edge and Beth Phoenix wrestling in the same ring at the same time just for the sake of their family, right? Just to see your, your mother and your father in the same ring wrestling, doing what they do. That's an amazing moment. That's an amazing moment. Is The Miz, uh, was The Miz the top of the list of people I want to see Edge wrestle on Monday Night Raw now that he's moved there? Of course not. Edge mentioned them. Whether it is Finn Balor, I mean, AJ Styles is the one for me, isn't it? I think Styles versus Edge, I, that's got to be for WrestleMania. It, it, it has to be. If they don't do that... I just I I can't I just don't know what they would be thinking, but Edge versus Edge it has to happen it has to happen. But I also like he said want to see Edge versus Kevin Owens that might not happen. Kevin Owens looks to be set to be leaving WWE in January. I know he's involved in the WWE Championship picture right now, but I think he's on his way out. Um, Edge versus Finn Balor, of course, I want to see Look, all of the names he mentioned: Damian Priest, Big E. I think they're all opponents for Edge. Was the Miz is the Miz the, the Miz the top of that list? No, but again, for, I think for the moment of Edge and Beth Phoenix teaming up, I think is a fun moment. And also as well, it's, it's difficult, isn't it? Because Edge's main focus at this point, despite still being a draw, I think has to be to put people over and make new stars. But he can't lose every match, can he? And you could, you could make an argument of who came out on top in that Seth Rollins feud um, with Edge. I mean, maybe Edge, but Edge probably had to win that feud again because he'd lost. He'd lost at WrestleMania. He lost to Roman Reigns as well. And... Uh, maybe that's the case. So this is a feud that I think Edge definitely wins, and it does build him up for the eventual loss too. You know, maybe Damian Priest, maybe Big E. I think Big E versus Edge for the WWE Championship is a match that will happen at some point as well. But I enjoyed the segment. I saw some people comparing it, saying, "Oh, WWE tried to do CM Punk versus, uh, versus MGF. They tried to do that segment like they did on um, on Dynamite last week." I didn't think it was like a rehash. I didn't think it was 
WWE trying to replicate that. I think the reference was fine, in the same way that I felt the WWE references last week were fine by AEW. I really don't care. I really don't care. I know people say, AEW live in rent-free in WWE's head, or when WWE do it, when AEW do it, they go, WWE live in rent-free in AEW's head. As a fan, I don't care. I really don't care, and I think it's a social media thing of, Fans on social media trying to wanting to make it a bigger deal than it really is, to be honest with you. Uh, speaking of day one, though, we do have a WWE Championship match that has been announced for that pay-per-view. The WWE title match at the first ever WWE Day 1 pay-per-view will now be a triple threat match. Now, this week's Raw opened with Seth Rollins announcing that he would be challenging Big E at the Day 1 pay-per-view. But it was later announced that if Kevin Owens could win the non-title Raw main event over Big E, he would be added to the match to make it a triple threat match. Now, Rollins was on commentary for the match, and Owens ended up baiting him into an attack to force a disqualification. The Raw main event ended with a DQ because it's WWE, and Raw went off the air after Rollins attacked Big E and Owens. So there you go. WWE Day 1's, um, I don't know if it'll be the main event, I doubt it. I think Reigns' match, whoever that's going to be against, will be the main event because he's Roman Reigns. Um, but it's going to be a triple threat match. Arguably, it could be Kevin Owens' last big match for the company. We know that Owens is meant to be, his contract's meant to be expiring with WWE at the end of January. Uh, and this, they do this, WWE. They do this, they, you know, it's not all the time, but a lot of the time when they have a big star that is uh, going to be leaving, wouldn't you know it, right at the end of their contract, they start getting in WWE title matches and all this kind of stuff. And you could argue oh, it's bad business to trying to elevate him on the way out. Not necessarily, because I don't think Kevin Owens is winning the WWE Championship. I think he'll be in there to take the pin forward, to be honest with you. And also, it's a bit of a negotiation tactic. Look, you're in main events. Yeah, oh, you're in main events. So stay with us. I still think Kevin Owens is going with you. Uh, going to AEW, rather. So... I think that's kind of the situation there. Nevertheless, it's going to be an exciting match, an interesting match. Not thrilled on Raw ending in a disqualification, but that's Monday Night Raw. <laughs> that's Monday Night Raw. And also as well, I get that Kevin Owens baited Seth Rollins, but again, it's also like, come on. I mean, Seth Rollins just makes himself look like an idiot, doesn't he? But that's the storyline. That's the creative on that show. That's what they're going to go with. Uh, finally, speaking of creative and speaking of storylines on Monday Night Raw, Vince McMahon's storyline with Austin Theory has continued. This new storyline between WWE Chairman and CEO Vince McMahon and Austin Theory continued on this week's Raw episode. Now, of course, this stems from the egg. Cleopatra's a, a $100 million golden egg that was stolen by Theory so he could take a selfie with it. He returned it last week. He got a WWE Championship match, which he lost. Vince McMahon goes, I like it. I see something in you like I saw in myself and all this kind of stuff. Now, there had been speculation if Theory would continue to receive TV time from this Golden Egg storyline. And that did happen this week on Raw. Early on in the show, there was a segment where Theory entered McMahon's office after being called in. Theory asked McMahon how he's doing. McMahon ranted about how he hates people, asking how he's doing when they don't really care. He mentioned about having an earache, an ingrown toenail. I mean, this is real. And they don't really care how he's doing. It's all phony crap. He's not talking about the segment. He's talking about uh, people asking how he's doing. And the whole thing was, the whole thing was expect the unexpected. And we saw this segment. We saw multiple segments throughout the show. Vincent Man Austin Theory. Expect the unexpected. Expect the unexpected. So it was after, it was right before the main event. McMahon asked Theory if he'd enjoyed himself. Theory said he had a great time in Vince's office during the show. McMahon asked Theory what he's learned. And he said, I've learned to expect the unexpected and be prepared for surprises. They both stood up to say goodbye and goodnight. But McMahon delivered a stiff slap to the face of Theory, knocking him back in his chair. McMahon also sat down and remarked, Theory has a lot to learn. I have no idea where this is going, and um, not in the sense of, oh, it's a good thing, but I just it just felt bizarre, really bizarre. And don't get me wrong, it's a massive sign of, you know, in, intent by WWE. They're trying their very, very best to get Austin Theory over. Obviously, the guy has a great look. I don't know if it necessarily how he's been portrayed as this doofus, essentially, in NXT, this idiot, this big meathead in NXT. And he's kind of portrayed the same thing, not exactly the same, but the similar thing on Raw, where he's a guy obsessed with taking selfies. And I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I really don't know. And obviously, Austin Theory does have um, potential. Of course, he does, and he's incredibly young. There's a bit of baggage there. We won't get into that, but. Um, 
it, it felt odd. I will say about Vince McMahon, and I know people go, it's great to see Vince back on TV. My question would be, is it? Is it really? Because I don't know about you. During these segments, I'm having to listen really hard, really hard to understand what Vince McMahon is saying. Because he's just like mumbling and like with like gravel in his voice. He's just, that's going to be how we're doing. It's just an ingrown toenail. It's just, it's just, I'm like, what? I don't know what, what he's saying. I really don't. So I don't know where this is going. Um... You know, recent years, what have we seen Vince McMahon involved in? We've seen him involved in storylines whereby, you know, he had the Kevin Owens thing back on SmackDown in 2017. That was fun. But where's Kevin Owens now? He's going to probably be leaving the company next in a couple of months. Um, he had one with AJ Styles where AJ Styles slapped him. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. Oh, we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. I give him credit for trying to get new people over, I suppose. But it just felt bizarre. <laughs> really bizarre. But... That's WWE, and that's Vince McMahon. Nevertheless, guys, as always, it's just one man's opinion. So what are your thoughts on all of these WWE news stories we've spoken about today? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'll do my best to respond and reply to all of your comments. Really enjoy interacting with you guys, talking about WWE, AW, Impact Wrestling, New Japan Pro Wrestling, all things pro wrestling here on the channel. So be sure to get involved in the community. Drop a comment below. All opinions are welcome. If you have enjoyed this video, please do smash a like on the like button too. Really does help us out here on YouTube. Go to the rankings and get into people's recommendation feeds if they haven't seen our videos previously. But most importantly, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to Rest News 365. You can do that by clicking the bottom right-hand corner of the screen right now. Or if you wait a few seconds, there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video, along with another video for you to watch. Thank you very much for watching, listening, streaming, or have you come across this video today. And I'll speak to you again very, very soon.